What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You watch the Dave Beyond TV where we go beyond the everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day to day basis. And I'm back once again. The moon is in Aquarius. We missed a couple days, so we're going to get up to speed. How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? Happy Taurus season. I don't, know. I don't even know if I said that to all the Taurus sun, moons, and ascendants. Hope y'all doing well. Um, so let's, let's jump right in, right? <laughs> For the most part, the moon being in uh aquarius now we left off i think the last video i did the moon was in sag and i think I, I think i spoke on that uh enough but for the most part going into the moon in capricorn we had the gift you know the gift was us to start to get back into that serious mode you know now that, that's what that energy was it was like let's get back serious because things things been a little high high fun high energy all over the place kind of hectic chaotic all that aries energy that aries stellium we was shaking off now you know what i'm saying planets done got direct you know what i'm saying mercury is not direct planets done came home planets done woke up you know what i'm saying venus back home now so venus finally after a long day of fighting for her life she's back in her safety of the crib like okay cool I'm back in Taurus. I can stabilize things about my values again. I can start to appreciate some things that are a little more practical and dependable. Um, and then when it comes, and then like I was saying, planets waking back up. That's Mars. Mars was sleep in Pisces, not sleep as in angle wise, but Mars was in a very, a very intense dream state. And the deal with Mars is, when Mars was in Pisces, it was you really had to put up that fight that fight for your, you know, subconscious, you know what I'm saying? But that's like your life for real, because everything you do is rooted in the, the things that you choose to do with your subconscious. If your subconscious is fucked up, you're going to make fucked up choices and actions with your actual awareness. You know what I'm saying? If you're not subconsciously aware of what you want, then you're going to make those kinds of mistakes in real life. And this is how we lead lives that seem like they all over the place or don't have no rhyme reason or some form of, um, What's that word? You know what I'm saying? When you, when you, I guess, you know, when you're on your path and things like that, right? I, I, I'm one of those individuals. I, I see it as you always experiencing synchronicities because you're aware. If you're aware of things, you can peep patterns. You know, synchronicities are nothing more, nothing less than a pattern. And as above, so below. So when you see synchronicities in your life, if you pay attention to how you feel and maybe what was on your mind when something synced up, That'll let you know what forms you're creating as patterns mentally. When you're creating certain mental patterns, there's certain things in your actual life that you become more aware of. Not, not everybody is always looking at things that symbolize higher uh, synchronicities or energies to the higher messages, I should say. You know, not everybody is is necessarily paying attention to, you know, like the, the numbers and, and just the way things are. So, but... And whatever you're paying attention to, you're going to actually see the same representation of whatever's on your mind. Small, large, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's a very subtle thing. Most of the time it's very subtle. So with, that, with, with all that being said, when it comes to, um, you know, your subconscious, my point of just saying that was, you know, that's the importance of the subconscious. It's very important. There's a lot of things that we have to, um, it's like the best way to navigate. You know what I'm saying? You can't navigate if you're not um, aware. And a lot of individuals end up bumping into things, aka creating things in their life as obstacles or reasons that their goals or dreams are delayed. You know what I'm saying? Just by having the wrong kinds of things on your mind. Um, but that even having things on your mind stems from what your subconscious is on. Because again, subconscious fears these things that... And really, when you think about it, all trauma comes from us being unable to protect ourselves mentally as as babies and children and being raised by individuals who have their own issues and so by default they their issues run up uh, rub off on us and i had made a video uh before this one that went into deep detail like when it comes to um so like how i was saying right when we think about the concept of generational wealth generational wealth is really more so rooted in the wisdom and knowledge that you can give to a younger generation based upon your subconscious awareness of yourself. It's like by you being more subconsciously aware, you're able to pass down more wisdom and knowledge on 
your children's subconscious. And the point of this is this. See, in a family line, right? When you're born into a family, every family has its line of traumas. Things that happen in the household that your family damn near, it's it thinks it's normal. And it takes an individual who's aware within that family who's usually, you know, classified as that black sheep, fan, or, you know, either you're the black sheep or you're that family member that everybody is kind of connected or cool with you, but you don't really feel as connected to them because of what you're aware of. And you might, again, every family has a couple individuals in it during a certain period during during periods of time who are aware of the family's traumas and you either deal with it two ways either you stick with it and you make it something to you know you involve yourself and you actually teach your family and you fix things or you choose to it separate entirely there's no right or wrong how you live your life is how you live your life um but here's the thing so with these two paths it, it like I'm starting to realize like when you're born into that family that family's trauma that they carry, it becomes almost like what you carry too. Because if you think about it as a spirit, you chose that family for a reason. Even And see, it gets even more, you know, complex in, in, in broken homes because, it, but see, even in broken homes, it's really not about all the loose ends. It's really about the family line that you experience, right? So, energies from your father and energies from your mother right and as you look down the line and you understand the trauma because nine times out of ten when we really look at wealth right the people who are the wealthiest what do they tell you about business they say you know you to make the most money you have to solve a problem but if you really think about it and not to say that individuals who came up with a good business idea that solved problems also had good family lives because that's not the case a lot of times either some people luck up and figure out how to solve other people's issues but don't deal with their own issues but my point of it all is saying you know when you look at your family line right the traumas that y'all experience are the mental blockages that are likely the reason that you are in the economic class you're in now, when we think about economic class, see, when we, it, or just, ec, ec, in, in this, like I said, class, uh, economic class, but it's really just like class, like whether you're middle class, low cl low, lower class, higher class, rich, uh, what they call it? I forgot what they call it in the middle, but you know, you either rich, poor, or somewhere, you know, um, I forget the, what they, what they called it. I guess they call it middle class, even in, in that term. But my point be, you understand. And then see, when we think about what economics is, economics are the people. Shout out Free, because she was she was going in on uh, Twitter about, you know, how when it comes to, you know, she was making an observation because she, she trades, right? And so when she's trading, she was like, the there's always, I, I forgot what day she said, I think the, I forgot what day it is. It's like the on every month, I think it's the first Monday of every month or something like that is the most busiest or active on the trades because that's where uh, we get to see what the economy been on. And we are the, the economy. What we choose to spend money on and, and, and buy is what the economy is basically about. You know what I'm saying? Because even like uh, in general, like when they be talking about the economy, it's, it's us, you know what I'm saying? It's us, the people. I think I said that in a, a previous video too, but when it comes to generational wealth, understanding how that shit actually works, like it'd be the, a lot of the reasons why you're not in a higher economic space or a higher economic class is because you're not, you're, you have, your family carries certain traumas that led to y'all manifesting a certain amount of access to what we all have access to which is you know time but ah man there's so many different points like i wish that other video actually saved correctly because it was um i said it a lot better because it's like these family lines that we're born into right they carry and it's because i'm even in this analogy like simplifying it to money and class like that's not even the point but it, it kind of is because 
on this physical plane within society. These are the things and rules that we are subjected to. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the things. There's the world, but then there's society. And so in the world, see, the thing about what's been created in society is that they got everybody into very unnatural states of being the they, they, they're like i mean if you, even if you understand the nature of like like now the culture now being content creators and stuff like that having to post ten thousand videos a week just to just to keep you know to establish yourself you know what i'm saying because then now you got everybody trying to chase the algorithm so everybody's saying putting aside their own natural energy their own natural what it, what they're made of and they're up, they're now adopting an unnatural system in order to get them into a better place within society you get what i'm saying like we as spirits these things that we're participating in they're not necessarily natural because and they're not natural because it money being a man-made thing established a man-made system that creates man-made problems that weigh on your spirit that you're mental so that's why it's very hard to even create a healthy balance lifestyle based upon just how things are set up but it's not impossible and i don't even speak in terms of things being necessarily un impossible it's, it's a way it's a method to it the question is um you know, how do we get there? And see, part of that is, you know, um, shout out to E because me and him, like, like I, I fuck with him because every time he'll jump into the comments and, and drop some real knowledge, like, like he'll drop a real good point or, well, I, I say me and him go back and forth because, um, you know, hit the way he sees the system and stuff like that. I, 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 I get it. I get it. Cause it's not even back and forth. It's, it's, it's really, it's really um, the type of conversations that we, we need to be having because the question is, how do we go about this shit? How do we make our circumstance better if, you know, things are stacked up the way they are, you know, and they've been like that for so long. So, um, you know, what I'm saying, you know, it's all love, man. It's it, it, like, to be honest with you, um, like I said, we need to have those conversations because that's what's going to help everybody move forward with something or that's going to help us come to a conclusion on on you know what to do and, and it's really not, not even about coming to a conclusion just yet it's really right now a lot of the energy we need to be in is um you know with uh a lot of the energy we need to be in is putting our individuality into practice on a practical level and what i mean by that is like you know what you know is what you know. So in a lot of ways, the content creator thing, instead of looking at it from the old mind, outdated mind state of hustle culture and like, oh, I got to hustle because I'm trying to get mine and blah, 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 blah. We got to transform that a bit into, you know, allowing this new era of content creation to more so be about authenticity, exploring yourself, stating your claim. And what happens is, see, right now with the sun and Taurus squaring Pluto and Aquarius, there's a learning process where we have to come into a better understanding of how to apply our individual value to the and transform it in a way that that fits within society. If you look, if you think about a puzzle piece, if we was all puzzle pieces, as a puzzle piece, the more you are aware of yourself, it's like the more you flesh out your piece, right? No one can really see the bigger picture until we come together with it. So you could concern yourself about what, you know, what's on the box and how we going to all fit together. But that's really not your job yet like what's more so important in your job is to look at your piece of the puzzle and say well what are the things in my piece that flesh out what i'm here for and the better you get with understanding that 
again, you might not have an idea of the whole picture, but you start to become aware of your borders and your borders is where your energy stops and another person continues. And what I'm saying by that is as a puzzle piece, you fit, you go where you go, right? Naturally, you're going to attract other people doing the same thing. And the theory is the, the unique shape you make is going to be just right for another individual's uniqueness to fit. Now, again, it's a bigger picture. So the energy, the, the, the pieces that fit to the top of you, to the right of you, to the bottom of you, to the, to the left of you, they might be more of the energies that coincide with what you've been working on. So there becomes a bigger awareness in that regard. But then there's a bigger picture too. There's another piece on the other side of the board that you might not necessarily agree with everything. But again, y'all know within the same ecosystem, y'all work together to flesh out, flesh out that bigger picture. Again, a lot of what I'm saying came from a video that didn't say correctly. And I, I wish I had it because it was, you know what I'm saying? It was, I'm trying to re... I'm trying to reach back into that bag so that I can, you know, provide what needs to be said as a message. And and you know what? I'm a I'm gonna have faith that whatever I'm pulling is is enough to to hit the mark. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have faith in that. And if not, you know what I'm saying, that's what that's the beauty of this era. The fact that I can make 10 videos in a row talking about the same thing, and you know, those who listen or those who care to listen or want to want to hear what I got to say will. But um, my point in all this, so a lot of that is what's been happening. Like all of that relates to um, that Mars and Pisces energy, because when Mars was in Pisces, a lot of the things that were just on our subconscious needed to be dealt with in that manner. We needed to sort these types of things out as far as what are we fighting for so that now Mars done woke up. It's back in Aries. Mars now has the courage to fight for what it was dreaming about, what it imagined. And if you had a lot of the negative things on your mind, like let's say you was invested in delusions. And so now you woke up, right? Instead of fighting for your dream and, and, and fighting that good fight to have a beautiful dream, you let that fight wear you out. And, and now you, you woke up from a nightmare and you're fighting but what you're fighting for is the wrong fight. What you're fighting for is for you to stay where you at, for you to stay scared, for you to stay in your uh, in, into your own prison. Because when we talk about the 12th house, it's also imprisonment. And see, speaking of the 12th house too, the sun, right? Where the sun is at, like one of the things, uh, you one of the ways you could look at transits also is to consider where the sun is at the first house of i'll just say the current moment of the current times right of the season so as a seasonal energy right or a current energy mercury is technically in the world's 12th house because if the sun is where the focus is right then that would mean that the the first house would be taurus so that's what we're paying attention to that becomes kind of that first I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's that it's that first It's what we're paying attention to. So it becomes that first house. This is just a way, another way to look at transits and understand what might be going on as far as a collective. You know, it's like collective type extra astrology. When you get into your chart, that's your individual, uh, you know, that's like your stuff. That's your it's more personalized. But when I'm talking in here now, it's more like collective energy. So as a collective, the world's. 12th house is where that Aries energy is. And that's where we have um, Mercury. That's where we have uh, Chiron. And that's where we have uh, the North Node. So these things are in La La Land. So are even Mercury itself, even though Mercury is not direct, it's in the world's 12th house. So again, we can have a very strong conviction and then Mars as well. Mars has entered that space. So we can have a very strong conviction on fighting the wrong fight. AKA, if you, if you believe and have faith in the idea that you're going to fail, you're going to start to argue and be courageous in fighting for that ideal to become reality. 
And by the time it gets Mars gets to Taurus, you're going to be stuck and locked into that reality. You fought the wrong fight. You, this is like you signing up for the army and now y'all get shipped out and you realizing, damn, my country don't even love me. Yeah. So that's like enlisting for the army and realizing, man, damn, my country don't even love me. Our country don't give a fuck about me. You know what I'm saying? Like when, uh, again, back in the day when they was telling stories about how, you know, I forgot what war it was, but slaves didn't join the war. I think it was the war. It was, was it the... I forgot which one it was, but it was like the slaves joined, joined the the war or black people joined, joined the war, joined the army, had to fight for the country that's, that enslaved them and still ain't get freedom after. Or the type of freedom they got after was like half baked, you know what I'm saying? And so, they, you know, they still ain't had any rights or whatever, you know, type of shit. And um, so when you think about it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, do you want to fight the wrong fight? You know, and you kind of got to check yourself. But um, real quick to circle back to the what I was saying about generational wealth to hammer that shit home, because that's important. Like when we think about a, our spiritual purpose and reason for even being here, a lot of it can be found within that whole dynamic. The fact that you follow the group of spirits here. And y'all carry the same issues, the same scars. Y'all might have experienced them at different levels, degrees, and in different areas of y'all life. But the energy is just the same, whether it be shame, whether it be guilt, whether it be frustration, anger that then developed and festered over time that turned into you as an individual carrying that same trauma. And you become that representation of that on the wor in the world. So, again, you could run away from your family trauma. But I guarantee the relationship you get into is going to be rooted. The issues in that relationship are rooted in everything that you've been carrying that you haven't been facing and dealing with. And it takes a lot of patience and focus and intention to actually correct these things. Because, again, and when I say those things, it's the same thing with your spiritual path. Your spiritual path is literally you on that mission. See, when we think about spiritual missions, I know I even be talking about like, oh, let's change the world. And but how do we change the world by changing ourselves? How do we change ourselves by diving within ourselves and facing that shadow, that shadow part of us, those those sides of ourselves that we don't quite get to that we don't that we can't necessarily the part of ourselves that ends up being pushed upon other people who trigger it. AKA the hurt people, hurt people thing. And it's like when when we go up, grow up and have kids, these kids become our reflection in that sense. So what we haven't dealt with internally, they become the carriers of it. And a lot of times that's why we have kids that, you know, challenge us in such almost visceral ways. You, you feel like, damn, the, the individual is like, to the point where you you got to question where this ind individual came from. You got to question what the spirit came from and what they here to do because it get that deep sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time, but it can get that deep with family ties and stuff like that. You don't realize like it's literally a, a group that you've been following. So the differences and, 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 you know, frustrations that you get from dealing with them they be the, the same thing that you got to be here, that you're here to. And again, what they say about what you're aware of, what you're aware of is often what you're meant to pay attention to and deal with. So you being aware of these issues and you having, you know what I'm saying? You being able to see like, oh man, my family, we got this issue and we got that issue. Yeah, I understand not wanting to deal with that shit and feeling like, you know what? That ain't me. And again, like I said, ain't no right or wrong to it. You could choose that, but. Again, you might just find later in life, especially if that that circumstance affected you in a way as a child that you still can't get over later in life. You're going to start to see those patterns reappear in the, in the what in the relationships you develop or the inability to d develop healthy relationships, the, the struggle and, and, and frustration that comes from, you know, trying to actually get a relationship to stay healthy. But that's really what it's for. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it's for. Like, 
it's a it's a like if you think about how they told you your relationship should be structured if they if you think about how they told you you should go about life and again society pressure to just get married and not only that but to marry the person with the money and finances to uh you know in the status and the family you know what i'm saying back in the day they wasn't just marrying people based upon bullshit you know what i'm saying like those arranged marriages a lot of times was also based on family spiritual lineage like if you got a family of alcoholics and i got a family of uh you know heavy smokers and stuff like that that might not be the you know or let's just say i'm 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 like like say my family don't got uh, uh don't got no drug usage in my whole lineage spiritually though like i don't got nobody addicted to nothing in my family line but i'm trying to get with somebody who got nothing but a history of alcoholics and stuff and addicts that would be one of those situations where uh, the the family that ain't got no blimp like you know who got a cleaner like status and stuff like no nah, like we we not get, we not letting you marry our 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 daughter or our son to care because everything you got to remember back then how it was structured everything was based upon lineage you know what i'm saying you oh you 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 part of royalty so that that royal family you want to marry into other individuals of that same status and again there was those times in which somebody who wasn't the same status was offered a chance to marry into some status and it was like fuck what you love get with that because that's gonna help the family out but my point is that that's on a spiritual level, you know what I'm saying? Even down to how we should choose partners in our own lives. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at like an individual spiritual space. Where What what family trauma that you carry? You know what I'm saying? What, what do you carry down line from line? Because it's going to come up again. That's going to become our combined line. Now we done combined lines. My family is merged with your family. So your family history becomes our family's future. You know what I'm saying? And again, it always starts and stops, has the potential to start and stop with the present generation that's having the children because that's the present moment. So that's what I mean by generational wealth is way more so about you in the present being subconsciously aware enough to raise your current, your child and live your current life in that space how well you create that balance show it, it it literally paves the way of what your what your next line could become because again when you raise your kids and they make it out with a healthy subconscious they're able to make better choices like i was saying in the very beginning your subconscious is like what's ruling everything what's controlling everything the reason that kids get be having fucked up lives and end up becoming, you know, screw ups in a sense. I, I mean, like not to be harsh because, you know what I'm saying? Like we all make mistakes and stuff. And as a kid, you should make mistakes. But I mean, I'm talking about the degree of mistake, you know, because there's kids who make mistakes like, oh, my bad. I, You know what I'm saying? I snuck out and went to a party and, you know, you know, saying, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's mistakes like that, but then there's other mistakes like, you know, those kids that end up in very adult situations when they was, when they very, you know, when they are seemingly too young to even take care of themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's like things that you look at a kid and he's like, damn, this kid got to deal with that. You know, kids facing life sentences and shit like that. You know, you 18 year old, you you yeah you 18 years old and you got like a murder charge like shit crazy you know but that, that that's a reality for some individuals and see the thing is again family line family trauma family and you got to look at the subconscious because again why did that kid end up there now again you could have did everything in your powers as a, as a parent to provide that and that might just be their their life path to go through something like that to transform them but again you just got to do your part of what you can do from that subconscious space to give them 
an opportunity to know themselves earlier. Because as a child, you don't know yourself. You don't have an ego yet. All you have is vulnerability as a child. That's why when you think about child raising and stuff like, or these are things I've been kind of just thinking of as I've been experiencing my, you know, going through life and shit like that. But it's like, if you really think about it, like a, a child is nothing more, nothing less than a walking, like they're, they're developing their ego. An ego's purpose is to protect the vulnerability in, in, in to provide the equipment or the awareness to be like, you know, again, it's like the, again, it's the masculine side of vulnerability. Vulnerability is who we are, but it's also our, it's our ability to connect. So what ends up happening is like I was saying in the other video, people thrive, people get so comfortable in their ego because they never, like, again, as a kid, they was raised by most likely parents who had them who it's almost like if you think of a kid in a, growing up in a household where their parent makes them feel a certain way that feels like things like rejection right and that could look like the kid you know the kid wanting to play but the parent too busy at work or you know too tired to interact that develops into them kind of internalizing a bit of rejection right and it's varying degrees right let's say on on a little more intense degree not only that, but the parent is kind of kind of a certain way. Let's say, and let's break it down astrology wise. Let's say that the parent and the child have op opposing energies. So every time the child is in a certain energy that rubs the parent the wrong way, the parent lashes out and it hurts the kid's feelings. But see, a lot of times in that dynamic, the parent isn't aware of anything you know say the parent isn't aware enough to know how to repair a child's feelings in that space because when they were a kid they weren't taught how to repair they didn't see that they didn't even experience that a lot of their life was them fighting to get to the position they are to provide a home and family for i mean a home and, and the resources for that new child so the, the parent mind be in a whole different place than where it could be that would be a better position to help the child repair itself because what's happening as that child is they're a walking vulnerability. They have no control. They're entirely dependent. So when they go through experiences like that, what happens? Well, spirit adapts, spirit interprets the kid interprets that as how do I prevent that from happening again? If it's pain. So, to protect themselves as a kid, you develop an ego. That's why, again, at a teenager, that's when a kid has developed enough understanding and awareness to protect their ego, their vulnerability. They're no longer a child who just only thing they can do is cry, scream, have a tantrum. And those are acts of trying to formulate an ego. You know what I'm saying? Like throwing a tangent, th th that's them just expressing raw vulnerability. But after a while, they develop more intelligent ways to protect themselves, to prevent that, especially if that because cause things like that, vulnerability being shown at a certain point starts to feel embarrassing, especially when they get into their, their grade school and they start seeing how other kids deal with different energies and they start feeling society pressures where it's not, it's no longer safe to just cry. It's no longer because my mom and I here, my dad and I here, it's not safe to cry. It's not safe to do these things. So I have to prevent these things from happening so that I'm not really exposed. And then just imagine if in the home, they're also not getting that same protection. So this ain't even about whether you should coddle your kids or not. No, your kid needs to go out and experience. But when they come home, they need better methods of how to deal with that ego or the development of an ego. And that's part of them knowing themselves. But what is the self? Self is what you've developed as a subconscious awareness. So these traumas that weigh on the kid's subconscious in which they were rejected or misunderstood at, the, at that age, it becomes issues that they have a hard time 
communicating and stuff like that. And see, these things just add on to the list of insecurities. And that's the thing about moving with insecurities. One always develops another one. If you are a bad communicator, you start to feel like you bad at other aspects of a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you're insecure about you being, un, you know, you being understood, it turns into you being un, insecure about your ability to communicate. And then that turns into an anxiety and insecurity about your ability to connect. That turns into a you see how I kind of keep on going, because if you can't do one, it feel like you can't do the another one. And see, all of this is brought out the most within relationships. Because this is you trying to get close to another individual. So relationships are the opportunity in which vulnerability could be shared, developing that true connection. Now, of course, you can have friends and do the same thing and be vulnerable. But and again, that's a, that's a form of relationship. So that that is what that be that what that becomes. You know what I'm saying? That is that. Now. When it comes to, um, you know, and so the generational, the real generational wealth is you being able to provide your your child with. And it's not even like you sitting there and teaching them like a school about subconscious principles. It's you being a walking example of subconscious awareness and you being so aware of yourself that you can help them navigate that space and then you know trusting yourself to even know how to come to them but and, and again easier said than done i'm saying this shit like it's it's easy and it should be in a handbook but i uh, it's no it's no manual because there's no telling those nuanced experiences that we all have that make things vastly different who you are, who you used to be, where you come from, who your kid is, and who they are, where they come from. <laughs> Different dynamics in the home, circumstances. I Again, I can only provide so much. But what I'm trying to do is just give a blank explanation uh, that you can start to develop your own interpretations on how to incorporate this. Because the key, I, I feel as though, when it comes to the issues in the world, again, it's all always stemming from a form of i was hurt so i chose to hurt others and that hurt came from trauma that was developed at a young age a child and and again traumas can happen later in life but again if you know how to regulate you regulate yourself as a child by the time you're an adult when certain things go wrong or out your hands or out your way the pressure or the trigger to react in a drastic way i feel it though drastically lessens you know what i'm saying like you know you'll be able to assess a situation much less personally because you won't have anything personally to attach to it when you got a lot of certain things that can personally attach to something you're gonna take it personal even if you don't if you, you're trying your hardest because it's gonna it's gonna hit you from an angle that only something that's personal to you can hit you. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, sometimes I'm not going to say you can't help it because you can always help it. It's about being aware of what's going on. But even in that, things happen. It's, you know what I'm saying? Before you even peep that that's what's going on, it's already got you. You already locked in. And you're already going down that rabbit hole. You're already tumbling down that, that hill. You know what I'm saying? But, um, like, I, yeah generational wealth is what we can pass down on that level as wisdom and knowledge you know what i'm saying and in awareness um because what that does is it provides a, a earlier or a easier access for them to explore or understand who they are and explore you know well understand who they could be but then they do the journey and the work themselves to know who they are you know but again you can only go as far as you've gone within yourself you know what I'm saying? So it, it becomes a thing that, again, is, is very difficult and takes time, but it's possible. Now, uh, getting back to the planets. So I was speaking on Mars, like I said, so fighting a good fight. Now, Venus is also back into uh, Taurus. So 
what's kind of been going on when the moon was in Capricorn, um, it was creating this trine with the stellium going on in Taurus. And that trine, right? That trine, hold on. That trine was creating more of a, so what's going on is there's more of a, I say like a there's more of a realistic calculation or you you're able to be a lot more realistic now. It's like a gift to be more realistic about not only what you value but the assim assimilation of uh, what am I trying to say? The assembly of your foundation. You know what I'm saying? You're right now especially with the moon and capricorn the moon in Capricorn really should have brought that kind of seriousness back. You know what I'm saying? Like for, for better or for worse, it's time to get serious again. And that seriousness, it goes in alignment with, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, we've been having that Aries energy, you know what I'm saying? Laughing, having fun, going crazy, fighting. Now it's time to go. Okay. What can we now a symbol as a foundation from what we've been planting seeds in. And another aspect of um, Mercury going direct, having the courage, see, that plays a part too because it's like right now, you either in a position where you could double down on what's going to, what you, what, what process you want to lock yourself into or you're going to try to dig yourself out of a hole right now like because the energies is kind of directed that way it's like you either gonna spend this tour season digging yourself out of a hole that you created because you went down the wrong one with that aries energy you you started fighting the wrong fight so you got yourself in a little pocket of energy that ain't really doing nothing for you and see again you could have did a lot of things based upon what you were fearing, what you were running from. All those things that be playing around in the Pisces energy, you know what I'm saying, self-doubt and looking at things from a delusional standpoint in which you kind of <coughs> maybe created your own darkness based upon you just having too many feelings about what you was into rather than allowing a healthy balance of going out and, and expressing these things and you know again we was in airy season so you had to be kind of expressing things even if you wasn't sure about it still needed to get expressed and still needed to be shown and seen so that we can get an idea of what's going on now in Taurus you might not feel like you have the resources for that so it's going to cause you to kind of go into yourself at a time in which again it's springtime so we need to be preparing ourselves to pop out if you're not ready to pop out already and the thing about being ready even if you're not ready, you really need to have the attitude as if, again, you can stand on what you've accumulated, even if it ain't everything. Should be something. And that something should be that those pieces that apply to your foundation. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of what we should see and see the cool thing about what's going on in Taurus is we got Jupiter there too. So let's let's break it down. Moon trying and Jupiter is like the gift to be more serious and realistic about what you're expanding in and your experience. That can scare a lot of people. See, I feel like this earth energy can scare you a little bit because you start to feel the weight, the realistic weight of what it is you might be trying to bring into existence. So to, to take that on might be a lot at the moment. And that's where you got to get out of yourself and say, well, shit, it's all a part of a process. It might take a time to get perfect, but cool. You ain't got nothing but time. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got nothing but time. So I might as well use that time in the present to get better. But not everybody want to do the groundwork. People love the Capricorn position to be the boss, but nobody want to do the work that the boss had to do by themselves to get to a point in which they can tell somebody else what to do.
Nobody trying to do what the boss do. Nobody trying to put in the hours the boss put in. All you see, think about it, as an employee at a job, you see the boss. <coughs> really, you don't even see the boss, for real. <coughs> the real boss, you just hear about them. It's word of mouth. But it gives you the impression as if they spend their whole day just being free. And that's a false idea. That's a, that's not true. Now, some people in positions like that can do that. But what you didn't see was before they could do that, everything that they had to do for you to even be here applying for a job. You wasn't there when they was at this level, when all they had was them their, their bare hands and notepad, and they had to jot this shit down till it got perfect. And, and not till it got perfect, but they had to jot it down until it became their life. They had to jot it down. They had to get up early. They had to put in that. They had to move this. They had to call that person. They had to go broke on this. They had to go broke on that. They had to sacrifice. And again, anything great that's manifested came from some form of a sacrifice. We all have to sacrifice things. You know what I'm saying? And the ultimate sacrifice is time. But time and energy for real. Time, energy, attention, all these different things. You got, if you really think about it, you break your life down. You pay attention to what you spend your time, attention, and energy on. <clears throat> time, you know, I've seen, well, I'm going to make a separate video for that. But it's really about energy management. It really ain't even about time management because the same the time thing. Well, yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm gonna make a separate video for that just because I'll be yeah that deserves its own video. But um, getting back to what I'm saying, so the trying right is the gift of being more realistic about what you're experiencing and see right now you have to you might have to come to the grip that you need to learn a bit more you need to experience a bit more which might be a little difficult if you don't have a lot of earth energies because see what was the thing about jupiter and taurus that a lot of people might not be picking up on is that the fact that with jupiter and taurus it's actually a whole different thing to jump into what it is that you say you want to do to choose to do it every day to choose to put in that work, like to actually put in the physical work is much different than what Jupiter is even used to. Jupiter might just sit back and imagine something and go there in their mind and gain experience from maybe seeing other people and gaining inspiration and then they just pop out and do it. But see, in Jupiter and Taurus, though, it's a whole slowing down. It's not so, it's not as whimsical as Sagittarius or Pisces could be where it seemed like you're just drifting. It's in a place in which it has to be fixated. So your focus is really what determines what you can, like you won't get the most out of whatever it is you're trying to learn until you focus on it, slow down and apply that same level of patience with what it is you're trying to experience. You know, a lot of people go into an experience and they just want to jump to the next experience while they in an experience. You on a journey, and you can't wait to get you can't wait to get to the next part so bad that you miss the part you in. So you go into the next part unprepared and it throws you off. So now you want to escape. Now you want to abort the mission. It's like. Learn how to flow through it. You know what I'm saying? You really got to learn, learn how to flow through this shit. Otherwise, you're never really going to make no progress. You know what I'm saying? You're really not going to get nowhere. Fuck it around like that. You know what I'm saying? You're really not going to make it nowhere. You're going to stay right there. Because, again, in, the, in today's time especially, nothing, you can't just... It's, a, it's, it's everything. Today's time... Instant gratification is like the drug that they selling people. So everything, like I was kind of saying in that internet video, everything that you see that you see online, somebody trying to sell you something, they trying to solve the problem of everyone being addicted to instant gratification. And they're trying to solve it by giving you something, the promise of an instant gratification. 
You know what I'm saying? They're trying to help you solve your problems by if you just buy my course, you'll you'll figure out how to make a million dollars with drop shipping. You know, if you just do my course, you'll make a million dollars on TikTok. But who do you see with the million dollars on TikTok? The people who just doing it. You know what I'm saying? And again, all that fear and stuff like that, it'll stop you right in your tracks. And that's what I kind of mean right now. Mer you know, Mars and Aries, man, you got to take that shit. You, whatever it is you look at, that, you got to take it. And, and it's like, a, and it's cool because Mars going to pass through the North Node. So that's more inspiration, passion towards your spiritual path. Or it could be frustration if you know you're not walking that path. So this is going to be a time in which a lot of people going to have to come to a certain decision on where they're going to apply their energy. Because you could just be, again, all that Mars being directed to something that don't look like you on your spiritual path. It's going to frustrate you. So you can either choose your, to change your perspective because you might be in a circumstance where the smarter thing for you to do is to change your mind about how you're looking at a situation versus then creating a situation to kind of like, you know, escape. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you look at the nature of Aries, it's initiating a new way of seeing, seeing and feeling. So again, what's frustrating you Instead of trying to destroy it in a way of, uh, you know, because you might be trying to destroy something like, fuck that job, I'm going to just quit. So you you turn it into you just cussing out the boss. But you might need to just change how you're looking at the shit so that you can, if you initiate a new way to see and feel, that frustration could turn into passion. You become very passionate about making enough at that job to lead that job you become passionate enough to give your actual you're gonna have enough passion to give your actual goals and and what you're trying to achieve outside of work the time attention and energy to actually do it rather than giving up on it you know what i'm saying or not even giving up on it but just again it's all about the time energy you choose to have again you can turn that frustration that ain't going nowhere, ain't helping nothing. If anything, getting you in another situation that you're going to have to come back and be like, oh, damn, I burned that bridge for no reason. But it's like if it, if you direct it into the right area, and sometimes that's the thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to, it might be your time to say, yeah, fuck that boss and stuff like that If it's if it's impeding on you and hurting you in that kind of way. But, you know, sometimes, like I said, that change of perspective give you it turn that into passion. And that passion is just how passionate you are about changing your situation. And you'd be like, no, I got all, I, I know I'm dead tired after work, but I'm going to make sure I put this up. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. See, Mars at this point, Mars is like there's no more excuses. You either ready or you not. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reality of it. You either ready for the world or you not. And, you know, again, if you're not, you just not and you're not going to choose to do the things that's going to look like that. And that might be a harsh truth to come to grips with. But reality is going to show you, you know, what I'm saying reality is going to the results always going to show you. And again, what you choose to do now, again, it's early enough. So it's like, don't even I'm not even saying that for you to give up on it. I'm saying that so that you understand that. It's on, it's up to you. Because the next thing, right, the, the the really all of this energy that we experiencing, we're going to see a lot of the results because remember, we still in the spring. So we see the results of the spring in the in, in September and fall when everything else that wasn't real falls apart. Things that we realize wasn't us right now, though, it's your choice. And we in that earth, like right now, we, we getting we getting into it. we already into it. But it's a Taurus stellium. So it's like, let's do it. You know, do it if you finna do it. If you're not finna do it, then it's, it's, you're not finna do it. That's just what's real. Now, um, you know, moon trying and uh, trying in this energy, though, is just a gift to kind of come to grips with that. You know what I'm saying? The gift to because I was I was saying what this was moon trying and. Um, well, no, I was talking more so about, well, yeah, no, I was talking about the Taurus energy. I, I sidetracked and talked about uh, Mercury, but for the most part, even when we look at, um, let's see, moon trining, um, 
the sun, you know, seeing hey, the gift of being able to see reality a little bit more clearly, see the reality of our feelings, at least, you know what I'm saying? And you might feel unstable at the moment or feel a little restricted. And so that restriction that you feel you have to, again, you, it's a gift, though. So with that reality that comes and hits you, it might knock you off a little bit, even Uranus a little bit, things and that's the that's kind of probably the most difficult part of it all. Even though Uranus has been here for so long, we should kind of know what it is and what it's hitting for. But when you look at it, Uranus shakes things up. It makes you want to rebel against certain things. And so when you have stability here, have it in the, in the, in the energy of something that's supposed to be stable, our foundation, all you can really cling to is uniqueness, individuality. And that's why, again, all that expression in Aries was so important because if you're not authentic about what it is you're participating with, then, you know, you've lost the plot. You know what I'm saying? You've kind of drifted yourself. And see, that's the thing right now, because with the label and, and with a lot of these industries, especially we talk about the music industry a lot, but all of these creative industries, that, that's, that be the thing. You know what I'm saying? That's how they get y'all. You know, they get y'all with the with the with the image, you know what I'm saying? And that image and stuff like that y'all be chasing, y'all don't realize. See, a lot of times, it be raw creative talent that gets the attention of these companies. Then these companies come. As soon as you sign that deal, it's almost like you've sacrificed the wrong things. As soon as you sign that deal, you become a product. So once you become that product, you're being utilized. So your truth becomes irrelevant because... Your truth is not what's going to get you out that deal. You working in that deal. You know what I'm saying? And then they give that image that they crafted. They tell you, hey, you have to create this product. You, you, But that product is you. Because your music has to become that. It has to become your look, your lifestyle. The better, the, the better you can get in that lifestyle, the better the music going to be. So they're going to make you embody that lifestyle. Once you do that, though, you telling people things you would never do. That's why you got a person like Future telling y'all to do drugs and he don't do drugs. You got somebody who live in the suburbs telling you that they kill people, influencing you to want to do the same thing, and they don't do that. They didn't, and that's how they sacrifice or they do witchcraft on their own people too. It's like, boom, they done fed you. And again, the, the music could bump. Could be good stuff sonically but they're selling you a product so spiritually you're you know if you really get sucked into that you know what i'm saying that's uh that's on you you know what i'm saying that's that's how i go but um yeah moon trying and um uh, yeah we talked about the sun jupiter uranus and venus now Moon trying Venus is um it was um it's almost like you might feel restricted from love, like the gift from restricted from love appreciating in value, love appreciation of value, and see how that kind of hits you again, looking at what you have, your resources, and not maybe feeling like you're restricted from it feeling like you're restricted from what you need to feel supported right or distance from that and see all of this energy too in capricorn the biggest thing the point i wanted to make is that it's squaring the uh aries energy so through that fight of what to be passionate about versus what's real it's like what's real and what's not and having to still have that maintain that level of courage to fight for what you think is real but again it's a learning process because you might learn something you didn't want to know that damn that shit wasn't even real but on the flip side being courageous and taking that step is what's going to teach you what is real and what to double down on as an investment to be serious about you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should be serious about that passion because that passion is the one that's the most promising. That one's the one. And again, in, in certain, again, learning on, on the other side, 
you know, you start to understand that, like, okay, I'm just going through a certain restriction at the moment, not necessarily the truth of what something is, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a reality, though. And the question is, are you, do you have the energy to fight for that? If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. But you won't know until you do it. And if it's something you claim to really want to do, then cool. But again, Chiron and Mercury squaring this, this energy is like, it's also a learning process based upon the mistakes. Did you learn that lesson? If you did, you'll know how to apply your passion. If you didn't, you're going to be fighting yourself before you even get in the ring. So you, you sure not going, you know what I'm saying, make it far. And then there's um, the North Node. Same, you know, saying kind of similar thing, too, because aspects of your spiritual path. Are you really on your spiritual path? Or are you not quite? What haven't you dealt with? Now, going into Aquarius, the moon shifted vibes into, you know, it was an emotional transformation that needed to happen from the reality of what it is that you're going through, which is why I took the time to break down Capricorn, even though we in the moon in Aquarius, right? So the moon in Aquarius switched things over to now reacting and responding to the communication and organization of what it is that we are in the process of developing as a foundation. Taurus, you know what I'm saying? Taurus is slow, steady, practical. So we're fixated on being practical about our own shit. Right now, it's a very much a gathering of what we do know to be true as far as these seeds that we planted. So, and what you know to be true, these are things that you chose to stick with. That should have been the decision in the beginning of tour season. Now, I'm not sure if we add second uh, deacon yet. We should be. Um, second deacon of Taurus is Virgo. So there's a mercurial aspect to the energy that we either in now or finna be into, which means that we need to be a little more critical about our values and critical about, I think, yeah, we, we, I think cause what, when does, uh, yeah, Gemini season starts like the 19th. So yeah, we got like 20 days. So yeah, I think we right at the 10 mark, if I'm not mistaken, not mistaken. Degrees of the sun is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Cause April 20th is when tour season started. So 20th to the to the first now. So yeah, we in that second deacon. So being more critical about what it is that we um, value, we have to be more precise on it. So the process in which we're going at right now is about tweaking it. How perfect can we make it? How organized can we get our foundation? And part of what's going to make that work is our ability to associate, our ability to communicate at the moment, fi our fixed idea. So again, we've been fixated on what we value. Now it's time to communicate that from that, that, that fixed nature. You know what I'm saying? And that communication needs to be something that can be shared amongst other like-mindedness, other like-minded individuals, I should say. So uh, that communication looks like you organize and see there's there's the external, but then there's the internal. So internally, it will look like you starting to double like starting to know how to associate with the values that you hold. And from that association, it'll help you organize your life a little bit better. So what the moon needs is organization and communication. So by you talking to yourself, right, it's like you'll do that, do that in the sun. It needs you to be. It's fixated air. So it needs you to know how to communicate and understand, convey, and connect a network. It's going to do it in a tourist way, though. So it's going to do it with being stable on its own values. So right now, it's kind of like looking at your associations that you have. If you're associated, if say you've been planting the right seeds and you're associated with good things, right? And good things as in like people, places and things, right? This is going to be looking like, okay, I, I'm, you're going to be understanding or learning your value within that circle or that network. And you're going to be able to convey it, communicate it, connect it, 
not only that, but you're going to have other representations of other individuals with fixated things that they can bring to the table as, as physical value. I was talking about internal, external, but it's like internally, that would be the equivalent of you associated with the right actual values. You know what I'm saying? Are you associated with values that contribute to your foundation or are you associated with values that take away from a stable foundation? So if you can't trust yourself with certain things, if you don't feel like you standing on business, so you, you might feel like, damn, it's going to lead to that Taurus energy not being acted on correctly. You don't feel like you had that. Like, the, the thoughts and feelings you associated with don't support what you're trying to build. So that Taurus energy could become stubborn. So instead of admitting that, you're not valuing the right thing. You could be extremely stubborn in your way that prevents you from communicating, prevents you from clarity and under it being able to convey your idea of what value is or what value you bring to whatever community you are part of. So this could lead you to kind of shine away from instances in which your presence is needed so that you can provide some communication, some clarity. That's what a lot of times communication is for, it's for clarity. And this is a time in which, again, out your feelings, you know what I'm saying? And not to say you won't have the feelings because there's a lot of things going on in, like I was saying, the, the collective's 12th house. So a lot of things could be bubbling up. But the thing about it is, and things, big things, things regarding your purpose, your spiritual path, things regarding your ability to actually take what it is that you want, Mars. Mars awake, but Mars is now in the 12th house of the collective. So Mars still got to fight through a little bit of this on the spiritual end, aka when it comes to the subconscious things that we believe to be true, subconscious things that we are affected and triggered by. We need to make sure we're monitoring these things so that, that we can stay focused and direct on what it is we're trying to foundate because that's the whole thing. This whole energy is about working on that foundation. But if you don't if you lose focus, this is where you can injure yourself, or this is where you can apply the wrong uh, piece of wood to the wrong area, which could lead to issues down the line. So this could look like in your process of getting your foundation right, you miss a step or you miss something that turns into, again, an unstable space, whether it be a concept or it be an actual, it could be anything. It could be something physical. You know what I'm saying? It could be something physical that develops, but it'll be something that you end up uh, having to kind of pay for by not being aware of where you missed out later on down the line. You know what I'm saying? It could turn into that. So that's part of what the whole this purpose is right now, because this purpose is if you still go through the frustration of communicating and associating yourself with like-minded individuals who share those same values as yours, right? And and you're actually very strong and convicted on, and again, you took the time during this Virgo energy uh, add-on or deacon, you're going to be more critical. You're going to polish it a lot more. But my point is, if now you can, if you feel confident, you can stand on it, this is where you can put it to the test and you can learn from other people who are like-minded kind of where your value fits and whether or not you need to adjust certain things. And that becomes good debate. That becomes good conversation for actual building later on. You know what I'm saying? Because, and that's even like what I was talking about earlier about, you know, different ways of going about working through the system and shit like that, or working, you know, really it's about creating our own system and showing a new way of doing things. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it's all about. Because, um, again, even when it comes to that whole generational wealth thing, you know, what happens is you grow up and you already, you know, again, your 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 parents, based upon them just being in society, got an idea of what you should do in, in society. The problem is who said you was trying to do something like that? You know what I'm saying? When you could have had a family business to give them, you know what I'm saying? And this, that's the physical version. It's the family business uh version of uh generational wealth but the issue with the money in the business situation is who's to say that kid wants to work there one even though they probably should you know what i'm saying it's a situation for y'all but that and it's like 
with you know money doesn't mean much without the wisdom and knowledge to know how to carry oneself to know oneself to understand what they would even want to use money for because see people who don't know themselves that got money faster than they got spiritual awareness are the people who most likely ended up blowing their shit ended up right back in the street you know what i'm saying again not every person who reached that space is aware enough or is i said aware enough is uh aware of everything and able to you know what i'm saying they might not have the best understanding of how to use it but they catch on you know what i'm saying and, and again it's they stuff so what they spending on the the ones who still got money today are the ones you see that spend their money on the right stuff the ones who flat broke who we don't hear from no more or don't even know where they at again it, it or may, maybe we know where they at and it ain't a good a good place you know we know they spent their money poorly you know a lot of people you see still touring you know hopefully they actually like that shit and not doing it because they have to because they locked into that deal they signed when they were 17 you know what i'm saying before they knew what was going on but um you know that shit go deep though you know what i'm saying shit go real deep um long ass video man but um <laughs> when it comes to moon uh so the moon passing through pluto again we have to take power control over our emotional state right now to remind ourselves to kind of stay on track stay focused you know this is a time again it's an it's another dry time so all of those feelings biases grudges we're gonna have to put a lot of those aside in order to get our work done now don't ignore these things feel these things deal with them though and that's the whole thing in earth transits it's not about avoiding feelings it's about dealing with them sitting with them and seeing the reality of them and again it might it's it's gonna look just as emotional as when we in other energies but what to do with it is different feel it process it deal with it move on let's get back to work you know what i'm saying during fire or water maybe you gotta sit with it a little longer but don't get washed up in it take what you can as far as a moment to rest and you know soak in it but then cleanse yourself fire might be a little bit more about um, you know, put up a fight for it or against it, you know, and decide that way or separate from it. You know what I'm saying? During air, talk it out. In earth, it's about dealing with it. So take it in, deal with it, face it, process it, and then allow the next thing, you know, put it aside, put it where it's supposed to go. Apply it to what you're doing or discard it. You know what I'm saying? So Right now, that's kind of the energy so that we can get back to work because the work is the processing the, or, or the process itself. You know, we're all invested into a process. So, again, the more you put in, the more you get out. So we have to put in what we can in order to get the result that we desire. And again, don't get so bent on what you might have now, what you don't have or what you feel like you got to put in in order to get something. And because, again, you'll, you'll start to size up your goals. That's a little, little bit of that earth issue, too. You'll size up your goals like, well, why should I put this much effort if I don't know if I'm going to get that much return? And sometimes it's not about that because thinking like that is thinking small. Thinking like that is thinking too grounded. You so grounded that you probably won't grow to be a tall one of these tall ass trees. You know what I'm saying? Because you're too you're, you're not thinking big enough. You're, you're stopping at the idea of you having to exert effort and you're expecting a certain outcome. You got to let go of that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Especially, it's like, that's one aspect of the earth on a lower octave, but on a higher octave, you could choose to just put your head down and know that what you put in is what you get out. So I might as well put it all in. If I put it all in, I should get it all out. And it might not look how I thought it was going to look, but if I look close enough, I'll see just what I need to see in order to know what I need to know. Because that's the thing about Taurus, too. Taurus could look at something and say, you know, it just has to work once. I think Earth sign said that. I just got to be right once. And so that's why a Taurus will stay on the same thing until it pops. Everybody around them pressuring the Taurus to change. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, you've been doing the same thing. I don't know. And again, sometimes it be stubbornness. 
because that's the other end of it. Right now, you have to check for your own stubbornness. But you have to look at reality. <laughs> you might be stubborn in your ways. Has your way been working, though? If it's a no, okay, stop being stubborn. Change it. If you your way hasn't been a million, it hasn't shown the best or greatest results, but you see progression, you might be onto something. So stick with it. You know what I'm saying? Your stubbornness might protect you at that point. It might look consistent. And that's what we have to build up to be. And see, the thing is, we, we're coming in on a um, Taurus new moon. So a lot of the adjustments and things that we're shedding now is so that we know what we need to lock in and be consistent with during the new moon in Taurus. Because all that's going to be the whole thing. New moon in Taurus is going to be like, what are we choosing to be consistent on? And then that transit is going to be you going through all the motions, the shaky moments, and everything you give the moon is going to be the result of how consistent you was or your ability to stay consistent throughout all the different transitions. She would have got a, a husky in Georgia. Lord. Big old husky. And how does Georgia? I mean, it's kind of cold this morning, but... Oof. They beautiful dogs, though. Huge, but beautiful. But, um, yeah. So, you know, when it comes to this shit, that's what's going on with, uh, with, uh, Aquarius. So, uh, squaring this energy you know what i'm saying going kind of going through that learning process uh while i was talking about tours by itself but um so keep that in mind you know what i'm saying even with the deacon of um virgo it's like we got to tweak things too as we go and so as we make these small adjustments within the, the but we you just got to keep the main thing comfortable i mean consistent not comfortable now when we hit that uh because right now we in the moon in uh aquarius so we still got a uh, still got a couple energies until we are yeah, but we we at the halfway point right now. You know what I'm saying? We at the halfway point where it's time to uh it is time to kind of switch gears. You know what I'm saying? This is the energy in which it's like it's time to go let's transition into the death where now it's about shedding, you know. Now it's about getting rid of the things that we know aren't working anymore, the things that we know can't be anything that we associate with because it doesn't comply with our values at the moment. It's like, why would I associate with something that doesn't reflect my values? That's me either devaluing myself or setting myself for, uh, myself up for disappointment. You know what I'm saying? Why am I loyal to something that isn't in alignment with my values? Taurus can't do that, you know what I'm saying? So when it comes to this energy, that's kind of the turning point. We have to make a decision mentally on what we're going to be steady and consistent on. So moving on to the moon sextile and um, Mercury, this is the opportunity to uh, direct our passionate thoughts. So we're going to start to feel more, it's almost like more clarity. So that clarity is going to help you understand, OK, where can I direct my thought in a passionate way in order to to stir things up? You know what I'm saying? Where where can I apply my thought or where it's like communication, too? So amongst those like minded individuals or who you're associated with, you can start to these are going to be those passionate times for passionate communication that look like y'all actually kind of more so like it's it's going to be kind of those. You know, you ever like you and your friend like going over a business plan and stuff like that. It's going to be kind of that energy where it's like you're going to have something that you can actually give them. And it, and you might it, if you took the time to focus on your values, you can have the clarity that's going to help with. Um, it's like you'll have the clarity that you'll be able to utilize to to convey to them 
what you value, right? And you, they'll see that you stand on it and it'll turn into something that could be built upon. Again, this is about your foundation. Part of that foundation is also considering the community around you that can support that or developing connections with the associations that could contribute to that. So this is kind of that first dynamic where you're going to start to think about or consider who you associated with and how y'all, you know what I'm saying, how that could be applied. But see, the sextile from uh, Mercury is just going to be the gateway in which you can start that conversation. And it'll be started on, again, passion. It'd be like being able to show them through communication. And that it, it, if you're talking about, you know, again, if you're on a better side of energy, if you're on the wrong side of energy, this could be aggressive communication or angry arguments based upon you not feeling like you're valued within that community or you not feeling like you're associated with people that can contribute to what you have to offer or vice versa you know deep down inside you don't have shit to offer so you become volatile to them to come come create some kind of self-sabotage situation to get you out of that mix entirely you know what i'm saying um moon sex talent um uh, we gonna say it's better to just be alone you know, so you'll come to that mental conclusion. Moon sextile and uh, moon and Aquarius sextile and Chiron opportunity to um, kind of like fix mistakes based upon what you choosing to associate with now. So we're reacting and responding to the associations, thoughts and, and being a little more clear on what it is we are connected to. So right here, sextile and um, Chiron or it's either you making the mistake see you could easily make it's the opportunity to make the mistake or learn from mistakes when it comes to associations so you know what you need to associate with as a mentality you know by now what you need who you need to associate with as far as uh your pe you know networks or people places and things too um so that's where that comes from it's the opportunity to at least see it and be able to think and communicate through it um moon sextile in the north no opportunity for you to associate with your spiritual path so you you can apply you know this is the everybody's feeling more like an individual so you on your spiritual path that's the opportunity for, for you to start to associate more with it get to know it a little bit more understand it and be able to communicate it um yeah moon sextile in mars now so opportunities for you to direct your passions, kind of like what I was saying with Mercury, but direct your passions into something constructive with a team, you know, with a, with a network, or it could be you starting to, to create competition within your network based upon, again, fighting the wrong fight, wrong concepts. Um, yeah, Moon, uh, Square and Venus. No, no. Yeah, square and Venus. So learning how to find, give, and create support within your network associations. So right now, it's like you're going to have to learn how to support like-minded individuals. And you're going to have to learn how, how to receive it as well. See, Taurus is really the receiving energy. So that's why even now it's going to feel like sitting back and waiting for stuff is the right thing to do. And the thing about it is we have to kind of learn, like, if, if we sit there, we do our thing, right? Cool. We can establish value. But we also have to understand, too, that in order for a healthy connection to be made, you have to reach out as well. You have to insert yourself. You have to, you know, make yourself, you have not make yourself, but you have to be genuinely interested in the individuals around you with things going on. If you're not, you're going to come off disingenuous. You're going to come off a little bit standoffish. You're going to come off a little bit like you're not there for the same things that everyone else is there for. So, and this is kind of like that whole Taurus and Aquarius thing where, you know, it's not the craziest square, but the issue becomes, you know, what are you willing to? It's like if you stay without the communication and just there on the work aspect, you you miss out on being able to be you miss out on actually being understood when it comes to that network. You end up being, 
you know, when you're going through something and you need that help, again, Taurus is be like, well, it's just all on me when nah, like you, that's what a team is for. You know what I'm saying? And, and we know teamwork make the dream work. So if the, you know, you're not going to have that access to the team if they don't even understand, you know, what you're going through or what you got to offer based upon not communicating it, you know what I'm saying? Not allow, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where that energy goes. So, um, and speaking of teamwork, making the dream work too, that goes again when I was saying about, uh, the subconscious thing, you know, because, you got to know what that dream is for you. You got to know, you know, everybody got their own different purpose when it comes to this stuff. We all, again, spiritual missions. Yeah, we have a mission to change the world, but it's like everybody got their own thing that they aiming for too, based upon they where they came from as spirits, right? And, um, you know, we all just making our ways to get there as well. But, um, yeah, so I was going to go down in, in that, that rabbit hole, but again, that, that needs its own video too. When we talk about as a collective or as we all come together, what is, what it's really, again, going kind of back to that puzzle piece analogy It's like everybody got their piece and they'd be closer to certain pieces and farther away from other pieces, but we still part of the same picture, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yep. So, uh, shout out to, uh, everybody coming through this weekend. We got, uh, you know, creators on vacation. We're going to be shooting a show. You know what I'm saying? Excited, excited to show y'all, uh, what we come up with, what we create and stuff like that. So, you know, shout out to everybody sliding through y'all. I mean, I don't want to hype it too much. I'm not going to hype it at all, actually, you know, but there's something special going on. That's all I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? Something special going on. So shout out to everybody on Fantasy this weekend. Um, yeah, so st be on the lookout for that. Also, the, the music is coming. I finally got all the features. At this point, I'm just finishing up mixing, and I got, like, mm, about two more verses to, lay, uh, to, to sharpen up. I want to go back over it. And then Equinox 3 will be officially complete. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yep, yep, yep. That's 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 the announcement. Also, the pre-orders for the astrology planners, the Daystar Astro Numerology planners, will be here soon. I had to kind of wait to uh for the samples to come in right, because I don't want to just be, you know, I want to make sure everything looks right before. You know, before the pre-orders open and I can show y'all how I look and we can get back on track with that, you know. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it for now. So uh, stay tuned. Stay up. Much love. Catch you on the next one. Peace.